some disturbing news for everyone out of Siberia. Scientists have revived a 48,500 year old virus from the permafrost. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. This is a longstanding effort by researchers um, who are trying to understand past pandemics and also past viruses by basically extricating them from the Siberian permafrost and then replicating them in the lab, which is what they were able to do with this particular virus. Uh, even more troubling is the name. The name of this virus is Pandoro, Pandovirus Tindora, Yodoma. Pandora virus. Exactly. Right? In reference to Pandora's box. Oh, cool. So, Love that. And why would we facilitate that in a lab? It was taken from 52 feet below the bottom of a lake in the middle of Siberia and then replicated in the lab. One of two viruses found in 2013, um, all the other one was a different type altogether. 48,000, you guys will all know, is a world record for the oldest uh, virus that has been able to be been replicated in the lab. And what they say is the remarkable feature of Pando Pando virus, Pandora virus is its size. It is a type of, quote, giant virus, more than one micrometer long. They say that it can be even examined directly under a microscope, contains hmm. 2,500 genes in contrast to minuscule modern viruses that infect humans and pa possess no more than 10 to 20 genes. So basically what they're telling us is that it's huge and it's big and it's old and also we have no idea what it does at all and that people in France are playing around with it in a laboratory setting. So, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, go ahead. And this this comes because of climate change means the permafrost is melting. So it's unearthing all of these like prehistoric viruses that scientists are then collecting up and reviving in the lab for some reason. Um, what the researchers, they warned it could be the tip of the iceberg. They said one quarter of the Northern Hemisphere is underlain by permanently frozen ground referred to as permafrost. Due to climate warming, irreversibly thawing permafrost is releasing organic matter frozen for up to a million years most of which decomposes into carbon dioxide and methane, further enhancing the greenhouse effect. So that's how you get this like follow on uh, cycle. Part of this organic matter also consists of revived cellular microbes, prokaryotes and unicellular eukaryotes, as well as viruses that remain dormant since prehistorical times. So um, very dystopian. You can imagine the, the sci-fi uh, movie of the end of the universe of one of these coming back to life and killing us all well, and here we are living through it. Gain of function, which is they're like, well, eventually they may be released from the permafrost, so we should just go ahead and replicate it in the lab to find out what it does. So it's like, well, what, what could go wrong? wrong? Yeah, it's like, not like that has ever happened before and caused a global pandemic. So uh, that's what I'm probably most concerned about right now. I'm like, at least with the permafrost, there's a chance that we won't get there. Uh, with this, like, what do we know about the biosafety protocols of this French lab, which happens to have facilitated this? Also, as they even admit, they have no idea what it even does. Yeah. And it's like this massive strain with all these genes could easily mutate and turn into something else. Like, we don't need to go down this road, all right? L leave it to the mastodons and the corpses. But Apparently, according to Global News, in 2014, the same group of researchers unearthed a 30,000-year-old virus mm. trapped in the permafrost. That discovery was groundbreaking. After all that time, the virus was still able to infect organisms. Now, this beats that record by a lot. So that was a 30,000-year-old virus. Now we're going back to 48,500-year-old virus, so almost 50,000 years old. And I, I mean, I have to assume that as more and more of the permafrost melts, older and older viruses, prehistoric viruses will ultimately be unearthed. Yeah. So doesn't seem good. It's going to be fun. All right. I hope we'll stick around. We'll see you later. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.